pleasure to be here and thank you also to the Frontier Center for, for hosting this event. I've come to Regina to deliver some really, really good news. Planet Earth is doing wonderfully. It's the greenest it's ever been, at least the greenest since we've been able to measure it. Until a few decades ago, there was no way of telling how we were doing on this planet. But thanks to satellite technology, we've been able to track it. And the, the data has come in. There is now more biota on Earth than, than, there has ever, than there has been in the last few decades. We are doing extremely well. And there are a couple of reasons why the planet is doing so well, why there's so much greenery on, on Earth. First, CO2. This is nature's fertilizer. Plants love it. Helps increase yield. Helps just helps everything turn green. Secondly, the planet is warming. Plants love that too. It helps extend the growing season. It, it extends the, the geographic area that, uh, that, that, that can allow harvesting. That's really good news, but you know, there are some people who would like to put an end to that. There are some people who want to stop the CO2 that we've been putting into, into the atmosphere that's helping, the, the, helping all of our plant life. There might even be some, some people like that in this very room. And if you are here, I think I know your reasons. I think I know why you want to take carbon dioxide out of the air. It's because you've read that this could lead to some kind of a climate catastrophe. And I know why you've read that. you read that because hundreds of reporters, perhaps thousands of reporters, have written tens of thousands of articles on this very subject. And they explain that there's a consensus on climate change. They explain that the world scientists have, have pretty well all agreed that we're headed to catastrophe if we continue to put CO2 into the atmosphere. And I know why those reporters say that. Because if you, if you look at their articles, their articles always come back to one number. And that number is 2,500. That's the number of scientists associated with the United Nations Panel on Climate Change who, as these reporters explain, have endorsed the conclusions of the mammoth United Nations reports that come out every six years that tell us that the Earth is heading toward catastrophe. But 2,500 scientists, that's a, that's a large number. 2,500 scientists can't be wrong. That's why the, the press is convinced that we're headed to catastrophe, because that's the number of people that they've been reporting endorse the United Nations positions on climate change. Well, I was curious about who those 2,500 scientists are exactly. So I got in touch with the Secretariat of the United Nations Panel on Climate Change. And I asked for the names of those 2,500 scientists. I intended to canvas them, to survey them, to see exactly what their views were. And the answer that came back from the Secretariat of the United Nations Panel was first, those names aren't public, so I can't have them. But second, those 2,500 are peer reviewers. They're not endorsers of the United Nations study. They never endorse the United Nations conclusions. They are peer reviewers to the background. <coughs> There are literally hundreds of background studies that go into the United Nations <coughs> studies. And these are narrow background studies that many of them have nothing to do with, with man-made causes of climate change. 
Some of them might deal with, with the, the mating habit of some animal in some desert. And what the United Nations has done, the bureaucracy has taken all these background studies, and then the bureaucracy has come to its own conclusions based on what the background studies have said. And these 2,500 scientists never endorsed those, those conclusions. There has not been any mass endorsement of the United Nations conclusions. There have been anecdotal endorsements. You know, David Suzuki uh, endorsed them. Many people uh, endorse them. But in terms of a large number of scientists, that's, that's, that's never occurred. So these are peer reviewers. And not only are they peer reviewers, I know many of these peer reviewers because I have been doing, I have been profiling them. I've, I've, I've talked to many of them or communicated with many of them by, by email. And I know that many of these reviewers, not only did they not endorse the conclusions of the United Nations, they didn't even endorse the background studies. Many of them are fierce critics of the background studies. The short answer is that the press has been taken in. They think that there's been this endorsement. There hasn't been this endorsement. And because the press has been taken in, you've been taken in. The Canadian public has been taken in. Our politicians have been taken in. Now, the extent to which we've all been taken in is even greater than you might uh, expect. <laughs> Because the scientists who are critics of the United Nations process, the United Nations panel, the Al Gore view of climate change, not only are these scientists not on the fringes of society, as, as you claim, not only are they not in the pay of Exxon, as is often claimed, these scientists are at the very top echelons of the scientific establishment. These scientists represent the who's who of scientists around the world. So they include, for example, Antonino Zicicci, who's the president of the World Federation of Scientists. He's the discoverer of, of nuclear antimatter. He's Italy's best known scientist. Another, another of these dissenters, these, these scientists, uh, so-called deniers, is Claude Allais, who's perhaps France's best known scientists. The list includes Germany's best known climate scientists. It includes one of Britain's best known scientists. It includes America's best known scientist, Freeman Dyson. He's the discoverer of the, the inventor of the tree. And this is a, the nuclear reactor that's used in hospitals and university laboratories worldwide to create isotopes. This list is as prestigious a list as you can possibly get. And these are the scientists that are being labeled as, as kooks, by scientists who are being labeled as being on the fringes of society. Now, in my profiles of these different scientists, I've come to realize that many of them don't have a view on, on the causes of climate change. But they just know bad science when they see it. And in their area, they have seen the United Nations come forward with what the United Nations claim are definitive studies providing, providing strong proof. And they look at it and say, this is, this is fraudulent. This is, this, is not, this, is, this is not real science at all. 